The construction and building height form the basis for parametric building design with Elite CAD. As the basis for this, I am using a point file with numerical values, which are interpreted in a three-dimensional terrain. To make the design process more efficient, I am using an axis grid. I use the axis grid to set the building outline in order to generate a parametric building shape. You can see this three-dimensional building shape here. The building shape can be adjusted using handles and grippers. You have a great deal of freedom here. You can enter values intuitively and, of course, with a high level of precision. You can now enter this information in any stories and resize walls and ceilings to create this building shape. Then I add the ground floor with columns which adjust automatically to the corresponding story information. I can therefore pull back a ceiling very quickly for a gallery. Then I expand all of the story ceilings on the facade in order to make balconies out of them. Then I go to the facade and draw a story transcending window here. These windows are not only drawings but also model the three dimensional structure. I can now apply another window here on the facade in order to position a sliding door next to it at the same lintel height. Then I select both elements and copy them. And now you can see how each searches for the corresponding level automatically. Then I add a parapet wall to the top floor in order to make it available in other stories. As you can see, floor plan information is already available. Facades and sections are also available if required. Then I divide the monitor into two windows that are in relation to each other. In the floor plan, I enter the start zone here, for example, add a kitchen and bathroom, and add openings to these rooms. The doors can be applied very precisely in diverse executions. Then I add a room with stairs. The stairs acquire the story information, and I can achieve an optimal step relation by adding and removing steps. Then I name the rooms. The rooms are not only assigned names, but given additional information, which is depicted accordingly in the database and also in the design model. I can select the materials here and depict them in different qualities. This information is always transferred to the design model, regardless of the view that you are operating in. Then I copy the windows that were applied in the views in the floor plan in order to allocate them to diverse rooms. Then I select this floor plan information and add the living room in order to depict this information in all stories. Note how this information is depicted quite naturally across the entire building in all views in the design model. Then I select the walls of the roof and upper story on the facade in order to then move them to the correct position. Then I set the ceilings back slightly so that they are no longer depicted on the facade and so that they do not get in the way of subsequent thermal insulation. Then I add a parametrically oriented banister to this story. The parametrics of this banister are extremely wide reaching. Any conceivable construction can be generated parametrically and in the greatest detail. Now I would like to add a conservatory glazing on the second story. To do this, I draw a rectangle and populate it with the window information. You must define all the options, such as window frame and casement divisions. I then define the next page with this window information in the same way and this part is depicted immediately in the design model, with the corresponding views and floors of course.
Now I specify the openings. I would like to have a single leaf window here. I make the setting and adopt it for all the windows that have the same dimensions. With just one click, all windows now have the same information. I follow the exact same procedure for the sliding door. I define the door in order to adopt these settings for the entire building. This makes you very efficient. Just a few hand movements are needed and you have defined your detailing for the entire building. Then I add the west facade. To do this, I zoom in a little, define the story transcending window, that is to have a very individual assembly here. Transoms and corresponding rods and dividers are available for this. You can define the structure of the window with just a few movements of the hand. I can copy the windows and the windows search their corresponding level automatically in the process. Then I expand this window to the width of the story transcending window and copy it to the next story. Note also this qualitative depiction. Then I select a view position in order to generate a perspective view. I can use the camera to do this, which I can move into different views simultaneously and change. I select an optimum view of the object. I take the terrain in addition and now add library parts to it. In this case, I take trees that are immediately aligned to the surface of this terrain. These plants are pixel based, which means that you can very easily make them individually. A subsequent render process now presents your design model in a presentation mode, which you can now use for presentations and documentations.